How many werewolves, zombies, slashers, and vampires can you watch before you get sick of them? For me, the answer is an infinite number, but I'm ghoulish like that. But today's picks for the Best in Horror Countdown 2023-2024 offers up movies with unconventional monsters threatening the innocent and not so innocent. I guarantee you aren't going to see a monster like the one that haunts this little film. At number 16, Cuckoo was released on August 9th, 2024, and is available on demand and digital download from Neon and Universal Pictures. It's directed and written by Tillman Singer. Teenager Gretchen, played by Hunter Schaefer, moves from America with her family to a resort in the German Alps. Gretchen's father played by Martin Sakas, and Stepmother, played by Jessica Henwick, design the resort and decide to make a new start in the well-to-do community. They've brought Gretchen and her stepsister Alma, played by Mila Lu, with them, even though Gretchen resents having to leave her home and friends behind. The resort owner and manager, Herr Koenig, played by Dan Stevens, greets Gretchen and her family with open arms even giving Gretchen a job as receptionist at the front desk of the hotel to combat the boredom. But Koning has some strict rules that must be followed, mainly do not go outside of the resort at night. Being the rebellious teen that she is, Gretchen disobeys these rules and runs directly into a monstrosity that has been haunting the area for years. Cuckoo is an odd little film that introduces a fascinating and fresh monster that is absolutely terrifying. While I had my issues with the film, I do feel that the monster, a hybrid of science and the supernatural, is something unique and truly uncanny. Much like the name of the film, the creature resembles a cuckoo bird, which invades the nest, gets rid of the eggs, and replaces them with their offspring, leaving their parents to raise them. As the story goes on, these despicable acts of nature repeat themselves with Gretchen, Alma, and their family. But beyond the strange behaviors of the monster, the look of the creature is horrifying as the creature sports a wide mouth, circular eyes, and has a shriek that causes hypnosis, hallucinations, vertigo, blackouts, time loops, and other discomforts. Kind of like a banshee, I guess. But definitely a monster that has not often been used in many horror movies. And in a genre where vampires, werewolves, zombies, and slashers are a dime a dozen, it's refreshing to see a creative and original monster for a change. I give Kaku credit for the original monster alone. But I also like the unconventional plot it sports. There is a detail about Gretchen's mother, which is held back from the beginning and is revealed late in the game that I think is supposed to be a surprise, But anyone having seen a movie in the last 20 to 30 years can see this reveal coming. So it really doesn't add to the story and instead cheapens it a bit as if the filmmakers think that the audience would be so naive not to spot it. Aside from all of that, I did like the story which feels more like a fever dream than anything else. Cuckoo doesn't follow any kind of conventional path. Scenes repeat themselves due to the cuckoo monster's powers allowing Gretchen to sort of choose her own adventure over and over again. The story is seen through Gretchen's eyes, and she doesn't know what any of this is all about, so we unravel the mystery along with her. Gretchen is not without her own flaws, as she's quite selfish and reckless, putting the audience in a position of following this impulsive character that darts headfirst into danger. Because Gretchen is like she is, and we are basically experiencing this story like little birds on her shoulder, It makes for quite the uncomfortable experience. So sitting through this film is going to be downright maddening for most mainstream audiences. That said, I like the feeling of unstable ground that permeates pretty much every minute of Kaku. The action starts pretty much from the get-go, and while it's difficult to understand exactly what's going on most of the time, the film is quite fascinating to watch. 
I especially love the way the film simply unhinges and goes scattershot during the climax with the cuckoo monster, Gretchen, a local police detective, and a gun-toting Dan Stevens crisscross through a hospital trying to kill each other. It's chaotic, and I don't know if I understood it all, but damn it if it wasn't a hell of a lot of fun to watch. I hesitate to mention this, as the subject often causes all kinds of controversy and heated debate, but I do think that the fact that lead actress Hunter Schaefer is a trans person has a lot to do with the ethereal and complex plot going on. Again, the cuckoo's egg hatches in the nest that is not its own, which is not unlike a trans person feeling as if the sex they were born with isn't their own. If you squint, this is a pretty obvious allegory they're playing with here, and I like the complex way they broached this subject without the film becoming preachy or in your face about it. I'm just a fan of metaphors, so that's the reason I mentioned it here. If you want to see Cuckoo through a trans lens, then you can. If not, then it's simply a weird little monster movie, and that's what I like about this strange little film. It's entertaining enough to keep the pace moving and story filled with action. It introduces a monster that is truly unique in a genre that is often so repetitive with its antagonistic characters. And it has some strong performances from Dan Stevens, who is always a delight to see whatever role he plays, and Hunter Schaefer, who still manages to be likable, despite the fact that she can be a selfish shit from time to time. All in all, Cuckoo ends up being a strange bird of a movie, but one I liked quite a bit once it was all over with. Much like Cuckoo, Amelia's Children deals with a unique monster type that I haven't seen before. Amelia's Children, aka A Cementa do Mal, released on March 1st, 2024, and it is now streaming on Hulu. And it's directed and written by Gabrielle Abrantes. Ed, played by Carlotto Cota, has always felt a hole in his life, not knowing who his birth parents were. But after his girlfriend Riley, played by I Saw the TV Glow's Bridget Lundy Payne, gets him an ancestry test, Ed discovers that he was abducted as a child and has a long-lost family in Portugal. So Ed and Riley head to a small villa in the middle of the forest in Portugal to meet his twin brother Manuel, also played by Cota, and his mother Amelia, played by Annabella Moriera. But the longer Ed and Riley stay with the family, the more Ed becomes enamored with them, and the more Riley becomes freaked out by their strange ways, like how Manuel and Amelia sleep in the same bed. It comes to be that their sleeping habits are not the strangest secrets this family holds. Amelia's Children is a wonderfully perverse little movie, sporting a modest budget and some truly horrifying, uncomfortable moments of familial creepiness. While I won't reveal them here, there are some moments in this movie that will truly make your toes curl, as this family is close, very close, and desperately wants Ed to join in on the fun. This is definitely going to be too much for some to take, but I found it refreshing to see that there still are perverse places of horror to go after all these years. Adding to the creep factor is the way the aged matriarch Amelia looks. Seems she's very fond of plastic surgeries and has undergone quite a few of them through the years to stay young, leaving her with a face that is stretched in some places, puffied in others. This is a truly horrifying prosthetic Annabella Moriera wears, making Amelia look iconic and otherworldly. The sad thing is, there really are actresses out there who have done this to their faces, many of them gorgeous women who could have aged gracefully, but instead go this Frankenstein route. Moriera is a true standout in this all-important and altogether ooky title role, giving the character much death past the bad plastic surgery, slow and stiff movements, and unblinking eyes. Brigitte Lundy Payne as Riley is another great performance, as she seems to be the only one who is looking at this bizarre situation realistically, while the role of the hysterical woman who isn't taken seriously by anyone is a cliché in modern horror, Amelia's children at least places the horror onto Ed and has Riley simply trying to slap some reality into him rather than suffering all the horror herself. As Manuel, Carlotto Cota does a top-drawer job of making him seem overly friendly at first and truly taboo-breaking and wretched by the end. The way he dances in a late scene in the movie is reminiscent of that Jean-Claude Van Damme dancing meme, but Kota pulls it off, making it even more creepy than JCVD could, if that's possible. 
Unfortunately, Kalta as Ed is less effective, more of a pushover, and easily manipulated, making him a character you can't help but disrespect and not care for. Ed's oblivious nature to the strangeness going on is the chink in this film's acting armor. The actor Kalta is fine and has an Oscar Isaac feel to his look and cool delivery, but the Ed character feels underdeveloped. There is a plot hole that is never addressed where Ed is encouraged to sign a document written in Portuguese that he has no idea of its contents. The story beat is brought up once and forgotten later on down the line, but Amelia's Children does culminate in a truly strange, bloody, and icky little ending that makes up for this fumble. While it isn't perfect, I found Amelia's Children to be a nightmarishly fun and wickedly wrong little number. If you look to horror for unease and discomfort, reminiscent of the creepy old vibe conveyed in Ty West's X, then this weird little movie is going to be just your kind of sickness. Once again and always, feel free to agree, disagree, or how about you play along at home and give me your own picks for your favorite horror movies. It's October, so let's talk horror. Come back tomorrow for the next level in the Best in Horror Countdown. Be sure to hit all of those pertinent bells and whistles down below, and you'll never miss a post. Happy Halloween, folks. Please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be. Stuck inside your reality. You're Yeah.